What's up guys? Welcome back. I'm excited to have you here today because this is going to be new comic book day, July the 14th of 2021, and there's a lot of great books on this list, so before I ramble too long, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, connect, follow, do whatever you do on the platform you're on. Just look for my furry face inside of an orange circle and click all the buttons next to it. So the first book on the list this week is going to be Ninjak number one. This is from Valiant Comics and uh, it's written by Jeff Parker and Javier Polito. I don't know how good it's going to be. I don't know um, a lot about the story. I haven't been following, I guess, like the pre-release and the progress for this book. But what I do know is there's a, uh, a very unique take on the artwork and um, it's from what I've seen, it's like very animated looking. It definitely doesn't seem well reflected in the covers and so I think it has caught some people off guard so far the uh, I guess like the early readers but I'm excited to check it out it's got a very like animated style like six sidekicks of Trigger Keaton if you've read that book um, so it's definitely something different for a character like Ninjak especially but I think the animated look kind of gives it some opportunity to surprise us with some more like exaggerated elements of uh, what Ninjak can do. So I'm definitely going to check it out. I'm excited to see how the artwork is going to play into uh, the fast action of Ninjak. And uh, that'll be out this week. So check it out. Everfrost number two from Black Mass Studios. This is uh, Ryan K. Lindsay and Sammy Cavela. And this book, I enjoyed the first one quite a bit. I didn't know too much about it. Um, I think I've, I had read the synopsis at some point, and uh, I know Lee over at WAC Comics was pretty excited for this one. So um, I had picked up that first one, and it really did a good job of giving me enough about the characters, but not so much that um, there's still mystery to it. Like, I still want to find out more about these characters and where they came from. Um, and then the world itself seems like it has a lot of secrets. It, it's very large, it's very well developed, and you kind of just get dropped into it. But they reveal enough that you don't feel like you're completely lost, while also making sure that you understand there's some uh, secrets hidden away in dark corners of this world, and I want to explore that world, and I want to do that with these characters. So I thought it was pretty masterfully executed, if I'm being totally honest. It has a great, like... Um, fantasy style delivery of some more hard sci-fi concepts and stuff so I thought that was really cool like it, it really merged the two genres very well and uh, I'm excited to find out more so Everfrost 2 bring it on Bunny Mask number two this was a book I kind of read after the fact I, I didn't know what to expect I had passed on it because the the little blurb kind of gave me the impression this was going to be a book that was really based around like this idea of like how cool characters would look wearing a bunny mask and um instead it it got into like some really weird things and uh it's kind of like being freed from a cult after years and years and years you know so i thought it was a, a cool delivery that makes me wonder what has happened how is reality broken for these characters after all the craziness that happens at the beginning of that book and so hopefully number two will kind of be stepping into that world and explaining all the fallout from what we saw in that first book it was weird it was different and i don't know how long i'm along for this ride but i definitely want to find out more after that first issue so bunny mask number two out this week Eve number three. I've enjoyed this book. I thought it was pretty good for the most part. Um, there was some problems I had with like visual clarity, I guess, in the second issue. Um, it some the art is really good, and I like the style. I like the delivery. I believe this artist worked with um, uh, Curtis Clow on Beastlands, and there's like three or four of those books now. Um, it's become quite a world and a uh, universe for Curtis Clow and his works. And um, the artist, you know, he was working with them on Kickstarter before he was doing uh, this Victor Laval book. So I definitely enjoy his style. It's just some of the artwork in there felt a little uh, cluttered and it was hard to tell exactly what was going on sometimes. But for the most part, I really enjoyed the book. I like the, the premise of it. It leaves us with this little girl that that thirsts for adventure so she's out to learn everything she can about this world um she has this great sidekick in this like android bear thing and uh there's a, a lot of great like 
climate science and uh, you know kind of pseudoscience and stuff going on uh, to make the world interesting to me so um, you kind of have like this crazy uh, dichotic world of like all these people are living on this post-apocalyptic earth like very I don't know if I would say primitive necessarily but uh, there's definitely a lack of civility among them and then you also have like these people that abandoned earth that are like running living in these advanced spaceships and stuff out in space so it's an interesting marriage of these two elements while you know one is trying to save the other but it'll be interesting if the question comes up like do these people even want to be saved and um, you know are are these people then exerting their own will and their own uh, ideology onto the earth as a whole or something you know so there's a lot of material to be mined out of this and I've really enjoyed it so far I can't wait to continue that adventure so that's gonna be Eve number three from Boom Studios Infinite Frontier number two is going to be out this week. Um, let's see, Infinite Frontier number one dropped, I think, two weeks ago now, and it was great. I really enjoyed it. I like uh, the way that we moved through the world. It did a great job of kind of setting everything in motion uh, for like multiple different groupings of these characters and stuff. So I've been enjoying like this uh, Infinite Frontier. I guess this is the event, you know, and I I've been enjoying this so far. Um, I went back and read Infinite Frontier number zero recently and still good. I still enjoyed it. It made a lot more sense to me now that we're a little farther away from that and I can see what it was kind of predicting, you know. Um, there's a part where Spectre and Wonder Woman, they're like walking across like these, these square panes, almost like tiles on a floor. But each one kind of like has like a different character and kind of something we're seeing them in now. Um, the one that caught my eye the most there was uh, Supergirl. It was definitely Tom King Supergirl. A lot of uh, red tint to the image. She had a sword. Like It looked just like that. So it's interesting to go back and see they were already predicting where we were going to be now. And uh, that just like gives me a little more faith in the architecture and understanding that there is a plan here. And just like hold on because issue zero was great. I've heard the secret files are great. I'm about to read those. Um, number one was great and so I'm excited for Infinite Frontier number two that's gonna be out this week and that should give us another puzzle piece to the new Omniverse that DC's running so check that one out as well the last one I want to talk about in the main six is Justice League last ride number three this is from DC the first issue I really enjoyed and then the second issue um, it was good, but it did take me two reads to really absorb it and um, find like the real the real meat and potatoes that was in that issue. So I'm excited to see where Chip Zdarsky goes with this third one. It's been a lot of interesting fun. It's hard to place within the universe, but we're also in this omniverse kind of thing. So, you know, there's this mixing of continuity and stuff. And so um, trying to understand who Superman and Batman are in this has been a little bit weird. They have this very cold and distant relationship, but I hope that we kind of expand on that a little bit more and give us some solid footing with those characters because they're definitely different versions than we're used to. Other than that, I've really enjoyed uh, Justice League Last Ride and I think the last issue really set us up for um, some big promises in this third issue. Hopefully we're going to get to see some of the uh, the more disastrous predictions that were made in the second one start to come true so i'm excited to see where last ride goes chip zadorsky has been doing great work on pretty much everything he's touched i guess but i've especially noticed him the last uh, couple of months on a different a few different titles and um he comes through every time so i'm excited to see what he does with justice league here uh there's a lot of other books that i'm interested in and uh, i definitely intend to read rapid fire list of other books that'll be coming out six sidekicks of trigger keaton number two i enjoyed the first one quite a bit so uh, i'm interested to see where the second one goes and how much fun that will be skybound x number two will be out and uh this has a murder falcon story i'm super excited for it but at this point i haven't even read the first one yet so uh we'll see we'll see how my excitement evolves for that book Detective Comics number 1039. It's been a little bit all over the place lately, but I really enjoy the new characters they've introduced. We got um, two villains in Vile and uh, Mr. Worth, so I'm excited to see what they continue to do with those characters. Um, I do wish Dan Mora was still on the artwork, but the new artist isn't bad either. 
Future State Gotham number three. I really enjoyed the first issue. The second issue, the artwork wasn't as finely uh, crafted and taken care of. And uh, so it was a little muddled without any color work. But I'm still excited for the storyline to see where it lands. So um, Future State Gotham number three will be out. Uh, the Joker number five. This is James Tynan, Matthew Rosenberg, Sam Johns, Francesco Fran Francavilla and Sweeney Boo. So this is a pretty big cast. I don't remember seeing all these names on the previous Joker books. So uh, I'm interested to see what that might mean for the storytelling. It almost sounds like there's going to be a backup story or two in this one. Um, Matthew Rosenberg is a great writer though. So I'm interested to see him on the staff. I wonder if we're finally getting where we're going or if this is going to be a shift in style and tone for this book. So uh, we'll see, but I am interested in the Joker and I've been enjoying the series so far. Mighty Morphin number nine will be out from Boom. Since like the second or third issue of Mighty Morphin, I really haven't had much interest in this run. And uh, yeah, so this, I mean, I'm gonna read it because we're definitely gonna be talking about it on Steve's channel, Burke Family 54 Comics. But I don't necessarily know where my excitement is for Mighty Morphin. There were some cool things from uh, Edge of Darkness that can be tied back into Mighty Morphin. So that does like pique my interest slightly to see if I want to get back into it. But for the most part, I've found that Mighty Morphin is falling flat for me almost every issue anymore. And Beyond the Breach number one. This is an Aftershock number one. Um, I really don't know anything about it other than there's something about like a girl and some breaches open and she gets sucked into one and then maybe like her brother and sister or something as well and so they have to learn to get along and love each other and be good siblings to each other and survive this weird uh, I guess like almost like post-apocalyptic stuff because they've fallen into a different realm and it sounds like they learn to move back and forth but they're still having to solve their problems as like the world around them falls apart so it's an interesting sounding book but that's about all I really know about it and I wasn't able to really describe that succinctly so um, I'm probably gonna check it out because it is a new number one and I always like a good new series but I also don't know how much ex how excited I am for it we'll see what happens that's the books coming out for next week quite a few um, it's going to be a big week. It usually is the first two weeks of the month. Uh, you usually get like a big week and then a giant week and then uh, weeks three and four will be consistently a little bit lower. So I think the 14th will be the second new comic book day of the month. And uh, so this is what I expect a lot of books, but um, you know, it's going to be hard to read all of these at once. So we'll see where I get from here. Um, all in all though, I guess top three that I'm excited for. I really want to check out this new Ninjak. Um, I've seen the artwork. I think it looks pretty interesting, pretty cool. It's very stylized. So um, we'll see. It, to me, it's kind of, it seems like a love or hate kind of thing, you know? So I'm hoping that I fall on that love side of things. Um, Everfrost number two. I, I really enjoyed the world that they set up in that first one. And I'm excited to explore and find out more about that. And... Um, I think Infinite Frontier number two. I really enjoyed the way that they've been doing the first two books in this. So um, one was one was solid. It really set up the universe. And then number, or I guess that was zero. And then number one uh, really left us on a good cliffhanger. It pulled together this team. I know part of that is because I recognize some of these people from some of the other DC Universe books I've been reading and stuff. Um, so it's fair to say most people might not be excited as excited about that book But I think overall as an event it's being well written and crafted so far and We'll see what happens once we get to the midpoint because that's usually where they fall apart That's all I have for today. Let me know in the comments below. What books are you guys excited for? What are you going to be checking out? What's making the top of your stack and until next time keep flipping pages Thank you.